Welcome Coyote fans. Uh, this is Paul Ferris and, and John Spangler and he's going to talk about his Coyote swap going into a 2000 uh, new edge body. Um, why don't you start off by telling about the motor you got there Jonathan. This is um, considered a Coyote motor. It's the same block uh, but it's got this giant intake manifold. This is the Illuminator XS cool. engine. It's rated at 500 plus horsepower to the flywheel, but we'll know that when we get it tuned at, at the end. It's uh, the same block as the other Coyote engines, uh, but the, the guts of the motor, the cylinders, the pistons, and all that, the, the crank, uh, are all Boss 302. Awesome. And then we've got this giant intake manifold <laughs> that uh, actually is going to fit in the car. We've had, we've had the engine in the car um, and uh, my stock hood closes. This car that it's going in is a 2000 Mustang. It was originally a six cylinder car, six cylinder five speed car. So <clears throat> it's, it's pretty much going to be like a custom ground up <laughs> Fit. Everything's been changed on this car, and we'll just kind of walk by here. Uh, finish with the engine first. Uh, that's the engine. The transmission is a Magnum six-speed, which is an updated version, kind of a stronger transmission than the old uh, T56, cool. which originally came in the uh, I don't know, GTs, or uh, I know it was in the Cobras. What I, my original plan was to make this engine think. It was connected to an 03 Cobra uh, drivetrain, and that's pretty much what I got. But uh, after talking to the supplier uh, about the transmission, I decided to go with this Magnum uh, because it's just stronger transmission. Cool. Um, Let's see, you've, you've got a headers. Kenny, Kenny Brown, or the, tell the, us about well, the, the uh, K, K member. Yeah, the K frame. In fact, all the underbody we'll take a look at in a minute is all from Kenny Brown Performance. Cool. And I went with them because that's what they do. They build racing Mustangs. So I wanted there to be continuity with the underbody rather than buy piecemeal from different suppliers. Sure. So everything underbody uh, from uh, suspension, uh, subframe connectors, K-frame, upper and lower control arms on the rear end, uh, control arms on the front end, they're all, it's all Kenny Brown. Beautiful. I see you've got a Flowmaster. Yeah, these are Flowmaster Scavenger Series uh, headers. Cool. That are made for this engine, but we just found out not for my next bike. So <laughs> no big deal. We got a little more. It's a Coyote swap, you're going to have fun. Got a little so. more tweaking around to do. Sure. All right, so let's we'll start back here at the rear end. Okay. Um, the car obviously originally had a solid axle, and being a six-cylinder car, it had a seven-inch uh, rear end on it. So that went along with the original drive shaft, along with the original engine. So I've replaced that with, uh, this is an 03 Cobra IRS. Nice. Uh, we have modified it again with up, new upper and lower these tubular control arms from Kenny Brown Performance um, that are much uh, they actually look stronger than the original deal. Yeah, right here. Coilovers. Coilover suspension on all four corners. Um, let's see, brakes. While we're back here, I'm using on the rear end uh, the original stock calipers. But I've gone with uh, bare rotors. They're 12-inch rotors, just for the uh, and using the stock calipers and uh, brakes on the back. Okay. We'll talk about the front end when we get there. Okay. Um, underneath here, we've got again Kenny Brown. All this is Kenny Brown stuff. Full-length subframe sub connectors. We have these little outriggers and a jack rail, and it's all welded together. Nice. So the underbody will be plenty stiff. Um, running the new brake lines, 
because with the, the brake lines are different for this IRS than they were with the solid axle. Okay. So we're running new brake lines and they're they're rooting up here up the side. Okay. Uh, the original lines are still in there, but they're coming out. All right. The underneath side of the car, and by the way, since it's an Ohio car, <laughs> <laughs> I know what that's had like. Had a little uh, rust on it, but nothing structural. But I wanted to clean the whole thing up, so. I know some guys go with chemicals and rhino liner and all that jazz, but what we did, what I did once we got the engine out, uh, had the hole underneath and the engine compartment sandblasted and then painted this uh, semi-gloss black. Nice. Uh, Very nice. You can see similar kinds of fitment type things. I, I had to do a lot of modification in this area for my car. And over there as well, where the drivers, where the, these exhaust components hit. So you had the same kind of thing going on yeah, there. Yeah, we had the same thing, kind of thing going on there. And you can see where we had to do had some to mods. That. Yep. We've got... Uh, this is really common, actually, yeah. um, that you get there. But it looks like you're getting it together. You've got, basically, you've... you've Fit the engine into the bottom of the car a few times now to... It's been in the car probably in and out three or four times. Cool. Um, we had a, uh, you know, what we used was uh, the guy here at the shop built a custom rack to so we could assemble the engine and transmission and then just lower the car onto it. And that way if there were fitment issues then it's a simple thing just to raise the lift and and just see how it, yep, yeah, see, you know, fix you see it. what you need to do. One of the problems we just had was... Oh, this was interesting. Yeah, yes. for some reason there was a whole bunch of metal hanging down here where the, uh, where the uh, transmission has to go up and it was keeping the transmission from going up all the way. So we cut that out and uh, I've got a heat shield mat that maybe we'll use there, we might have to use it elsewhere just to block heat from the inside of the car, just to kind of keep it a little cooler so we don't cool. get heat off the engine into the inside of the car. Uh, coilovers on the front. I'm using my stock uh, spindles. And uh, on the front, it's my front, brakes. These bare. Yeah, we have, they're all bare brakes. These are uh, three piston. They're gorgeous. Three piston uh, uh, calipers. calipers. And these are the rotors. They're 14 inch. Massive. Awesome. Massive brakes. So it'll have plenty of brake up front. Not so much in the rear. We didn't want to over brake the rear ends because you can start bending components back there. So. And you did the turnkey I see on the front here. Right. For the, uh, this, this comes AC with the. AC and uh, power steering. Yep. It's a turn, turnkey kit for the engine. And it just bolts right, right on. on. It looks just like it grew there. It's just beautiful. The other thing that we're doing, uh, because the K-frame where the oil filter mounted, you can't really see it, I don't think, uh, under here, but I got an adapter. We're doing a remote oil filter. Gotcha. Uh, and an oil cooler. Oh, nice. That will mount on the back of the uh, radiator. Radiator is an O3 Cobra radiator. Okay. Um, the uh, rear end and drive shaft, and uh, I've got Steeda catback exhaust. All came off the same car. Uh, originally, I was I was going to put a T56 in this car, but then went with the stronger uh, transmission. But the drive the drive shaft on a T56 would have been the correct length. But this this uh, the IRS yes this one mounts with a slip yoke, so we are going to have to. Get the drive shaft shortened about an inch and a half. Okay. But we'll be able to use the the cover drive shaft. Amazing. Well, I I really uh, think there are going to be a lot of people interested in your build, and uh, it is uh, definitely. I, I don't know anyone putting this particular motor in a in a Mustang period, let alone a new edge. This uh, engine uh, only came available for consumers uh, about September of 2013. Okay, Ford so fairly recent. Ford Racing put it in their race cars, 
But they were putting it in current generation Mustangs. And um, as we can see, you have to do some fitment here to make it work in a yeah, this car's our generation. Be pretty much a one-off custom. When yes. we get done with it, with all the, the modification and hammering and tweaking that, that's going to have to be done. But we know the engine fits. Uh, this is the second K member that we got from Kenny Brown. They've been excellent to deal with. Uh, I've dealt with a few suppliers. Uh, only one has been kind of a dud, but Kenny Brown has been very good. Uh, when we had the original K member, the engine just didn't sit right on it. Uh, so they, I, I sent them some pictures. They re-engineered this K-frame, and we just did a direct swap. Nice. Same thing with uh, the headers. Originally, when we had, you know, the fitment issue over here on the passenger side, you see the headers real close, and we're getting ready to modify the K-frame, this, this strut right here where the engine mount is, where it's so close. But originally, they had us where is beat up one of your headers. They had us on their advice, we uh, <laughs> took this beautiful header, heated it up with a torch, and dinged it with a hammer handle, and the thing still didn't fit. So, uh, again, Kenny Brown came through for me, because Flowmaster was not going to provide me a header unless I bought another set, and they're, they're kind of pricey. These things are 409 stainless, and they're ceramic coated. Nice. Um, so Kenny, working with Kenny Brown, they had a contact of Flowmaster, sent us actually both headers. We only needed the right side. So we're going to return the uh, original header and the new uh, left side one that we don't need. And uh, Kenny Brown is going to do some more work on this K-frame. Uh, and they'll use these headers for fitment. Nice. Yeah, so that, they've been they've been excellent to deal with. The people I got the transmission from was uh, D and D Performance. That guy was excellent. Okay. Uh, got the tranny, the shifter, the bell housing, and uh, twenty one spline clutch. Nice. The only modification really to the engine, uh, which you can't see here, was. Uh, uh, I took the uh, stock flywheel off, which is steel, and I had an aluminum billet one. So we're using the aluminum billet flywheel. We'll have to deal with that in tuning because the engine will spin up faster, uh, a lot faster, because uh, yeah. and it also won't want to decelerate. So when we put it on the dyno, they can they can tune it for that. Yep. Uh, for that change in weight. And and I I should state, you know, anybody that's doing one of these Skydy swaps is in for something like that. They're, whether or not they've done an aluminum flywheel or what, even if you had the most stock components that you want, given that you're doing this motor in some other car, best to get it tuned when you're all done anyway. So, yes. Ford, Ford Racing has also been pretty helpful uh, in selection of headers. Uh, the only little snag was I was probably the first consumer to buy this particular engine because I got I ordered it in September yeah. their original build uh, specifications because I called them and I said what does this crate motor come with and what am I going to need to add and they said well it doesn't have a flywheel does it have an alternator yeah it's a boss or two alternator so I bought the alternator <laughs> yeah and I already had the, the flywheel so when the engine shows up lo and behold it's got an alternator and a flywheel on it so they said, well, we changed our build uh, specs. So, so you they, had an extra alternator. And they took that back. Nice. Yeah, they were able to, I was able to return that. Uh, I like how your alternator is actually in the stock location. Thanks to the turnkey system, you just got, Right. it's just, you know. Turnkey was excellent. I mean, that kit, it just it just bolts on. You got to make, you got to pull a pulley off. But, I know, uh, Matthew Overbeek used the same setup I believe even looks the same. It's so clean, it's nice, it's all filler. You know, it, it's just a real nice clean installation. So that was the, that was one of the easy parts. Yeah. The other thing we changed, this engine being a racing engine, this is the original oil pan. This is a 12 quart <laughs> oil pan. It's steel. Yeah. Uh, it even looks, look at how it looks somewhat hand hand distant. 
Yeah, that's probably a very low production number item. The problem with it was... You know, Here, this, these enormous ears. These enormous ears, yeah. It's a, it's a, no. No way to fit the clutch cable in. No way to fit the clutch cable. The clutch cable comes right through here. Right. This one barely fits. But it one fits. It shows. And this is a what, Rosso? Is that what you're saying? Rosso, yeah. And this is an aluminum pan and it's nine port capacity. Nice. So I, I, you know, I'm looking at nine ports and roughly a half port for the oil cooler. Yeah, that's still about 95 bucks worth of Ford oil if you're at a dealer. I'm telling you that right now, but it's still better than 120 bucks worth of. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, never, I didn't want to have to take a second mortgage out of my house. Every time you change the oil. And the remote nice. oil filter, the original oil filter, which I don't have, you know, it's up against the cave member. So uh, we're doing a remote oil filter anyway, and I'm switching to an FL1A okay. filter. And uh, for the initial oil change, I'm just using the stock FL1A, but when I, uh, after the first oil change, I'll go to the racing version of the FL1A. But it'll mount right up on the left side. The other change is with this engine, there was no way to get a vacuum pump in there for the brakes. Right, you I, did something unique here. I tried a couple different things. Uh, I should have this out. Uh, Don't worry about it. He, yeah. You did a, what was the brand? Do you remember the for the electric brakes? I do not. It's okay. Um, I got it through Summit, I believe, but it's okay. electric power master cylinder. And up here where this diamond plate is, we that's where the original vacuum pump mounted. I, yeah, vacuum pump, excuse me. Right, so we're gonna take the diamond plate off. I've got a, a piece of uh, 16 gauge steel. Okay. And we're gonna replace it because this is not beefy enough to hold the. Uh, the master cylinder and it has to mount right there but it's oblong it's roughly uh, probably about seven or eight inches long and two inches wide so it's oblong and it'll fit right in there the other components with the brakes can be mounted anywhere because basically one of the issues you run into even with a 4.6 in this body the uh that vacuum booster hits the the upper valve cover it, here it's right here yeah. And so uh, what a lot of people do, something similar to me, they get a HydroBoost system. Um, yours, you want with the electric thing, that way, from what I can tell, you're not going to have all the hydraulic lines running all over Kingdom Come. That's going to be a really neat thing to see. Yeah, you still have a hydraulic steering, though. The, so. the goal is uh, to, when this car is done, to uh, make it look like it was factory. factory produced. So... It, it should be a fairly clean installation. Well, I I think uh, that's I'm, I'm running low on battery of all things right now. I think that probably because of all the activity that I've had on on this phone today. But uh, anyways, I, I really appreciate you talking about your build, and uh, I'm going to put this up on Coyotefy, uh, which uh, C O Y O T I F Y dot com. Um, basically. Uh, I only know of a few new edge swaps in the country. Yours is one of a handful. So, and definitely the most unique. And I, I thank you for your time. And, and again, uh, I'm Paul Ferris. And uh, thanks for tuning in, Coyote fans. Alrighty.